Hello friends, today I would like to show you how I'm cross-pollinating by hand adeniums so they would set seed pods with plenty of healthy seeds from parents I select. First, I would like to show you tools that I'm using. Here I have scissors and stripes of old louver and dental floss to make labels to mark how old the seed pods are and who the parents are. The waxed dental floss is best because it disintegrates slower. The finished tags look like this and I prepared pencil for marking. The reason I mark the age is because the pods ripen in three to five months after pollination. So first three months I don't need to check, but after that, if neglected, the cracked seed pod releases seeds and they fly away. So this way I know when to start watching so I won't start too early or too late. Next, I have a strong magnifier. Uh, he has a loop on the back and a screw that attaches to the head. The magnifier magnifies 10 times there are also more expensive models on the market that you can buy through the internet that have a little flashlight attached to it. But I don't need that because I'm using this uh, magnifier for cross-pollination outdoors, plenty light. It's called visor or visor, I'm not sure. Next, I have a wooden toothpicks to transfer pollen from flower to flower. Next to it, I prepared a little container of water to wet the tip of a toothpick. I dip the toothpick in the water and shake excess water off which is important because if there is a whole drop of water, the pollen will get dissolved. Next, I prepared a napkin because after I tear open the flower, sometimes a flower would release a sap which I will dry with the napkin because otherwise the drop mixed with pollen would make the pollen to dissolve. And the last thing I have are adhesive labels. With those I close the flower so the sun and wind won't dry the stigma and pollen and the insects also won't interfere. And finally, I have here two blooming adenium plants that I selected for you to view how am I cross-pollinating. Here is one and here is another. Both double petal, two sets of five petals. This one is light color. From here I'm gonna take a pollen and transfer to the dark red one. And from dark red one, 
I'm gonna transfer a pollen to that light one. I for purpose selected flowers that are not too old because the old flower might drop off before the pollination has a chance to take effect. Now let me open these flowers and then I'll continue with this demonstration. Here are the petals I tore from this light flower and this dark flower. If these wouldn't be adenium flowers, but flowers of some other species, then these long things would be filaments, on the end of which would be attached pollen. Here you can see it on the light flower, same thing. But there is no pollen on the end of it. The adenium flower is constructed differently. The pollen is in between the base of the filaments right here. I can't focus on it right now, sorry. I am taking a toothpick and gently pry open that section peeling few filaments. Okay, here it is. That part of the flower is now open and you can see on top of that light green part called style is stigma and on top of stigma is a gray pollen right here. And on tip of stigma of this other flower, here, you see pollen. So now I'm wetting the tip of the toothpick and shaking water off. And I'm taking that pollen out. I have to put it somewhere for storage so I can make it rest on this label. Now I'm taking another toothpick, make it wet, shake it and take pollen from the red flower. Now this pollen from the dark flower I'm putting on a receptive part of stigma of the light flower. It's hard to focus camera. I would have to draw you which part it is. Because I have a hard time to make a sharp image of the part of stigma that is receptive to pollen I will draw you here the diagram. So here is the bottom of a flower, here is a petal, another petal of open flower, then there is a style, light green, on top of the style is a stigma, and on top of stigma is a pollen. This is the pollen which we take with a toothpick and put it to another flower and put it on a receptive part. The receptive part of stigma is this part, the bottom of a stigma. Why are you, why are we putting pollen from one plant to another? Well, partially because we want to choose the parents that would make interesting mix. 
but also because adeniums are to some degree self-incompatible, so you have a bigger chance of succeeding in pollination if you take pollen from one plant to another, just like the mud does it in middle of a night in nature. This is the receptive part and that and the original pollen is on the other end of the stigma. Right here. Now I'm taking pollen from the light flower that was resting on this label and putting it on the receptive part of stigma of the dark flower. I know you can't see it very clearly on this video, but I show it to you on the drawing. Now I'll peel these labels to close the flowers. Now I will bend the petals that remain and tape them. And do the same thing on another flower. I have labels in every part to indicate who is who by number. These numbers are corresponding with numbers in my database in computer. I would write the number from one part onto the flower tag in the other part to indicate where did the pollen came from and vice versa. Now the labels are written, all I have to do is hang them. And that's all for now. If everything works out in a week or two after the petals fall off, the seed pods will start to grow. They usually have two parts and in three to five months they'll crack right here exposing seeds with their little parachutes sort of like a dandelion except they have two parachutes one on each end. They will look like this and then the fluffy stuff can be broken off, which is very easy, and seeds planted. That's all. Goodbye, friends.